One of the most humanizing things I experienced in prison was the opportunity to work. And not the exploitive work where people are in fields picking crops for 12 hours a day or washing dishes for 16 hours a day to meet their basic needs, but the work that allowed me the opportunity to grow and learn. And unfortunately, the culture has shifted away from that. The culture has shifted towards learned helplessness, towards teaching people to not be able to do anything. I'll give you an example. The first time I got to run a buffer, I was hired as a buffer man. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I don't know how I got the job, but I was excited. So a floor buffer is one of those machines that you swing around and you polish the wax on the floor to make it really shiny and really pretty. Well, I'd never done that before and I didn't realize a buffer is a lot harder to run than you think. Because if you try to muscle it, it will muscle you back and you are not stronger than that buffer. I don't care who you are. So I had to realize, okay, there's a lesson in here of letting things go, of riding the wave, of whatever you want to call it. And then you get to the point where you can run the buffer with one hand or you can do it effortlessly and there's something to learn there. And ultimately, does that really change your life? No, but the fact that you're learning, the fact that you're doing something new really can change your life. And adopting that attitude of always learning something new and always doing new things can again change your life. So I learned that and I learned the best way to put wax down, the best way to strip wax, the best way to do all these things that added something to my life. And it wasn't just the knowledge that I gained, but it was the opportunity to learn and to learn how to learn because that became a central focus of my life. So then I got a job on maintenance. And that was one of the coolest ones yet because all of a sudden it goes from one day, if I touch a screwdriver, touch a hammer, I'm gonna get a charge, to my job is to use screwdrivers and hammers and hammer drills and hacksaws and all these different things. And it kind of blew my mind because guys spend 30 years in there and never get a maintenance job because it's really hard to get. They never learn those tools and they ingrain the mindset that I'm not allowed to do that, that I'm not supposed to do that, that I'm not even supposed to be around that. And then they're supposed to get out and get a construction job. Like we've literally taught them that they're not capable of doing this, that they're not allowed to do this. That's a lot of programming to get over after 10 years or 30 years or 50 years. So we treat, create this sense of like learned helplessness. And I'm not saying we need to give everybody a hacksaw or give everybody a hammer, but I think there's this understanding that we need to have places where people learn to work and they learn their agency and they learn their abilities. If you think about old prison movies where they have like leather shops and they have hobby rooms, there's something really important about that. It's not just doing the thing, it's learning to be capable of doing something. It's learning to learn to do something new and realizing how capable we are because a lot of guys have that learned helplessness. They believe that they can't do anything because they're literally told they can't do anything. I'll give you a really easy example. When I first got to Buckingham Correctional Center, you could buy a sewing kit. You go to commissary, you buy a sewing kit, you got a little needle, you got some thread, you have the things you need to do to repair your stuff. So if your shorts tear, you sew them up. If something else tears, you sew it up. And then they decided, hey, we can't do this anymore. As a matter of fact, if you fix your shorts or if you have shorts that have been fixed, they're contraband. How does this make any sense? Like we've literally said, we want you to throw away that thing you could fix and repair and it's perfectly good. And we're gonna give you a charge if you don't. Oh, and if you don't have the money to buy a new one, tough crap. Because that sewing kit was five bucks and you could get one from somebody on the yard or you could borrow it, but those new shorts might be 10 bucks or those new shoes might be 25 bucks or 30 bucks or 100 bucks, depending on which brand you bought. And so we're telling people, spend more money, throw your things away, don't repair, don't care for the things you have. It just blew my mind completely because we should be empowering those very people. The guy who sews should be empowered to teach other people to sew. He should be empowered to teach other people to repair their things and take care of things and come up with creative solutions. The guy who fixes TVs, because think about this, your TV is $227 or $240, whatever it is now, if it breaks, you don't have the money to buy a new one unless you're lucky enough to have money from the street. Like who has that extra amount of money? That is if at the lowest pay rate, that is 10 months of paychecks. So if you don't eat, if you don't buy hygiene, if you don't do anything for 10 months, sure, you can buy, you can buy a TV. But if not, you're not going to have a TV versus you can pay this guy 10 bucks or 15 bucks to fix your TV. So why are we teaching people, hey, no, just throw it away? We should be empowering the TV guy to teach other people how to fix TVs. We should be having him mentor with people on the street so he's learning a skill that he can apply when he gets out. But again, we're told, no, no, you, you can't do that. That's, we, we hate for you to learn something. We hate for you to do something productive. We hate for you to repair things. We just wanna throw them away and buy new ones. We have literally created a disposable society and it is so clear in prison because we're even told that people are disposable, that they need to be thrown away, that they can't be fixed or repaired. That's the lesson we have with everything in there, with the clothes, with the TVs, and essentially with the people. We stick people in there. Man, before they passed juvenile parole in Virginia, because there's no adult parole in Virginia since 1995, I would watch all of these 16-year-old kids come with robbery charges, or, gun, or excuse me, carjacking charges. People who hadn't shot anybody, hadn't hurt anybody, but had committed one of those crimes and had 50 years, or 80 years, or 100 years. 
What are we thinking when we're giving a 16-year-old kid 100 years? Now, thankfully, under juvenile parole, they'll be eligible for parole after 20 years. We're still selling a 16-year-old kid that he's going to spend at least 20 years in prison, and there is no guarantee of his release. It just, it blows my mind. So again, we've created this sense of learned helplessness. We've taught people not to learn and not to do new things. And we've created this exclusivity where you can get on maintenance, but they're what, like eight maintenance positions for a prison of 1,150 people? What are the chances of actually getting on there? Unless you know somebody, unless you're in good with somebody. Now you may be able to get a job in the factory, in the wood shop or the metal shop or whatever's there, but even that's hard. And a lot of times they only wanna hire certain people. So rather than saying, hey, we're gonna train everybody. We're gonna teach everybody something. We're gonna invite everybody to learn something new. We're like, hey, we're gonna cherry pick a couple people. We're we're gonna allow them to learn. We're gonna allow them to actually have some job prospects when they get out. And everybody else, like, good luck. We'll see you in a couple weeks. So I think we can change the system by changing the mindset. Hey, teach people to sew to repair their stuff. Teach people to fix TVs. Teach people to work with tools. Have a controlled space where people learn how to work on computers. Whatever is available, we need to be empowering people and believing them and giving them skills rather than taking away their abilities.